Hi everyone, here is Luke from Apple Online Academy and in this video I want to show you some tips for using notification center widgets. Most of the people using widgets on the phone, but why not use it on the Mac? A lot of people actually ignore these widgets and not take the time to learn how to use them properly. But if you spend just a little bit more time editing these, you can make them really useful. The easiest way to show the notification center is to swipe with two fingers from the right to left on your trackpad, but really from the edge, almost like you are trying to pull it from outside. Of course you can always click on the time on the upper right side corner of your Mac, but once you master the swiping technique, you will use it all the time. So this panel is called widget and notification center. At the top you normally have notifications and underneath are all of these widgets. As you can see I have it very random currently. The default set is not much useful, so let's go through it and make it better. I want to start with weather widget. It's really helpful because there is no other weather app on your Mac. So while on iPhone or iPad you've got dedicated app for this, the notification center is the only place to see it on the Mac. If you don't have it here at all, you can scroll down and press edit widgets. Now you can find it on the left and drag the weather widget all the way up on the top. This is how you view weather. Not only that you can see the current temperature, if you right click it or control click it however you like, you will be able to change its size, so make it large like this. It will give you an hourly forecast, a daily forecast and the current conditions. But if that's not enough, you can actually click on it and it will open up a web page which brings up the full weather forecast for the area. So the widget is not connected to any app, but to a website. When I mention the area, you can also edit the location you want to see the weather for. So I have it set to my hometown, but if I click here, I can also change it to a different place or to my location so it will automatically change if you are traveling with your Mac. I really like to use this widget, but let's move on to another default one, which is calendar. Usually you will find it here like this, showing date and upcoming events. However, there is another calendar widget that you can add. Again, go to edit widgets and then look for calendar here on the left, and it will list all possible widget styles. The one I like is called month. You can add a little monthly calendar to your setup. I know that a lot of people like to have one of these available, so why not have it here as well. Now right under you can notice the word clocks here. This one is medium size and it has 4 different times on it. I can control click it and edit it, edit the clock and change which 4 cities are shown here. But what if I don't need 4 of them? I personally don't like the style of this widget. I have a different way how to show the world time. The fact is that you can add as many of the same widgets as you want and always set it a bit differently. So in this example I can just add a clock here and instead of using it as a single clock showing my time, which is basically useless because I have the time always shown on top, I can actually right click it and set it to a different location. I can have Tokyo here for example and then add another clock and set it to a different city like New York. Now I have two important cities side by side. But it actually doesn't need to be a city, there is another cool thing about it. In addition to cities, there is one other location you can choose as that, and that's UTC. UTC time stands for Coordinated Universal Time. That's a standard which is used to set all the time zones around the world. So for example New York City is in the time zone UTC-5 and most of the European countries will be UTC-1. It is very useful if you work in an international company and have an online meetings. Because these meetings are usually set for a UTC time, rather than a specific time zones since there are people from all over the world attending. That is enough about time. 
Next thing I want to look at is the stocks app. Not everybody is into stocks, but did you know that it can actually show cryptocurrencies or value of gold? Let me show you how to set it up. Stocks are like the clock. You can have a single item here or you can have a multiple ones in the list. Again, I prefer the single one. Let's add it two times straight away. Right click the first one and change the symbol to something else. Like Apple for example. Good thing is that you don't need to know these symbols anymore. I can just type gold and it will show me the symbol which is GC equals F. How about Bitcoin? It has even more complicated symbol. If I go to Yahoo Finance, I can search for it there. In the past I used it to search for the symbols which you needed to add to the stocks app. But now the app has its own database, so I can just search for Bitcoin here and it will offer me the same symbol. What is also cool is that you can use stocks widget to show currency comparison. I can put here USD slash CZK and see how the value is changing. So even if you are not into buying stocks, you can use this widget as well. Another interesting widget is under news. When you open news, there will always be a lot of random headlines. But you can filter news if you add a topic widget here. And of course, you can change the topic for anything you want. I am a sports fan, so I can add some sport news here. Now I have the topic set, so if I click on it, it will open the news app and should show me news only from the topic I have chosen. Outside of the America, the app doesn't really work properly. But if you are the lucky one and it works for you, this is a great thing and great widget to add here. Let me know in the comments below where are you from and if this widget works for you. At the end, I actually kept two more widgets which I like to use on my iPhone and I can add it on the Mac here as well. These apps are photos and notes. With photos widget I can't do anything, it will be just randomly selected photo from the library. But it's nice to always see some of your memories here. Notes app doesn't really have many options either, but instead of a notes folder I can at least choose to add a specific note. And if I right click it here I can select the note which I want to be always shown. So you might want to store some short text you want to quickly access. For example this note shows me some edits for Final Cut video. I can easily swipe and open up notification center and find out this number without even opening the notes app at all. So this is the basic set of widgets I like to use. There are tons of other widgets on the app store. You can get them from the third party developers. It's up to you, but I like to stick with the basics and customize them to be useful. The main thing I wanted to point out in this video is that you can use some of the widgets different way than you thought before. Like stocks app to be used for currencies. Or you can have a variety of weather widgets for different locations or clocks for different cities. Well, I hope these tips make notification center widgets more useful for you. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.